are carrying out some moth surveys here in the lag and um, because later on this year um, we will be releasing a pair of beavers into this area so we thought this is a fantastic opportunity to get some baseline data um, whether it's moth surveys, bird surveys, plant surveys uh, we, we just want to get as much information as we can before they arrive so that we can see the changes um, that they make in the vegetation and the habitat structure here and uh, as the habitat changes we'll see the suite of species that we find here changes as well. We are um, just out in the Nep Southern Block at the moment. It's early April uh, and as you can see behind me, uh, the Blackthorn Blossom is in bloom and it smells amazing. So uh, this evening we're we've put the moth trap on in the hope that we will catch some of the early spring species. In particular, we're looking for a species called the slow carpet. Uh, as that, that's as in slow blackthorn, slow rather than being really slow. Uh, so it's been recorded here in the past, but we haven't recorded it uh, for some years now. Uh, but we know it must be here somewhere because we've got lots of really lovely old stands of blackthorn, uh, which is um, its food plant. So um, we're in one of the lags at the moment, so it's one of the little floodplain meadows, uh, and we're feeling quite hopeful this evening we might catch some moths. So this is um, a moth trap. This is uh, called a Robinson's uh, moth trap and it's a 125 watt uh, mercury vapour bulb. And this draws in uh, moths from all around uh, and we're hoping that this evening we'll get a really good haul. Here we are back at uh, the lag. It's first thing in the morning. As you can see, it's a beautiful morning. Uh, the blackthorn is looking stunning as well and the birds are singing their hearts out. Uh, so the moth trap has gone out, um, so it's run out of fuel overnight, uh, which we expected to happen. But let's go and have a look and see what's in the trap. So we're just about to open up the trap. We've got our first visitor here, first customer, is a clouded drab. It's on the outside. That's quite a common moth at this time of year. But we're going to carefully take this off and see what we've got inside. So we've got egg cartons here, and the egg cartons are uh, something for the moths to hide behind. Uh, doesn't look like we've got anything on that one. Doesn't look like there's... Ah, okay. So we've got a couple of species here. We've got a Hebrew character. Um, on the left there and we've got a brindled beauty on the right and these are moths that can all fly at this time of year when it's quite cold so we've got here a small quaker that's a very common moth at this time of year nothing else on the back ah and a few more moths here we've got uh, another hebrew character hiding away in there we've got another brindled beauty quite difficult to see with this light and just in here we've got an oak beauty uh, which is one of the larger moths you get flying at this time of year. So this is a twin spot uh, Quaker it's a fairly common uh, moth species uh, and it's right at the peak of its flight season at the moment because it's normally on the wing uh, March and April time uh, and it feeds on sallow catkins and um, if you know NEP you'll know that we've got a lot of sallow here so it'll be doing pretty well. This is the satellite moth again a fairly common species in the winter um, it's as you can see it's got a, a kidney mark on its wing and two little satellite marks, little satellite dots next to it. So that's how it's got its name. Um, and they can vary between like a creamy colour or orange, so they're, they're quite variable. Uh, it's um, omnivorous, so it eats a variety of different species as a larvae. Um, and the adult actually um, comes out in sort of late September or October and then will be active through the winter on, on milder evenings. This is a small brindle beauty moth. It's a fairly local species and a really interesting uh, fact about this moth is the female is um, wingless. Uh, she's normally rather furry uh, and quite stocky. Um, so um, you might be lucky enough if you're out at night time to spot one on a tree trunk. And as you'll see, um, this is a very well camouflaged moth as well. 
this is the brindle beauty moth, a very close relation to the small brindle beauty that we just saw. And again, you can see how well camouflaged this is when it's resting up during the day. So any passing predators like birds um, will hopefully miss it and, and carry on and find their, their uh, snacks elsewhere. This is another camouflaged moth. This is the oak beauty. Um, and as you can see, it's uh, quite a large moth. It's fairly common. Um, but we're finding them around oak woodlands and scrubby places at this time of year um, and it feeds on oak, uh, hazel, aspen, alder, sallows and other broadleaf trees as, as a larvae. So this is a perfect kind of place to be finding them and you might be lucky enough to uh, find them um, sitting up on, on a tree trunk during the day so it's another good way of finding them. So this is common Quaker, this is one of the most common moths at this time of year and they're out really in abundance from late March through to May and this species feeds on a wide range of herbivorous plants and the, as a caterpillar, and the adults they will also feed on sallow catkins. So we were just putting away the moth trap, lifted it up and underneath in one of these little holes that a cow has created with its feet we have found a purple thorn. This is the first time we've seen this moth this year. Um, they're just out on a wing now, and they look rather like dead leaves when they're hanging upside down during the day. Um, and as you can see, they hold their wings apart, so they look a little bit more like a butterfly um, than a lot of other moths do. And this is a species that lives in scrubland, so yet again, just perfect at nep. <laughs> 